my name is Clay Croft, and today I have Eric Evans from Onyx Maps to show us basically how to run through and develop uh, our mapping philosophy. philosophy. Oh, that's a great, great way to put it. I, at first, I was like, oh, I'll do this. And then I was like, no, I'd have to be calling these guys to make sure that I'm saying everything right. Why don't we just bring in the pros? Enter Eric. You got me. So uh, we're going to be running through the mapping philosophy, how to use it on Onyx on the desktop, and then into mobile devices. Yeah, we'll hop by the pads. iPad. We can, uh, iPad's basically the same as your phone on Android or iOS, and then you've got the web solution that we'll, we'll spend a lot of time in both. Okay, so where do we begin? Well, I think uh, most people would actually find on X by asking where are off-road trails near me and that's usually where we begin yeah. um, and really when it comes down to it we want to provide a way for people to know where they can go how to get there how they do it safely and how they return safely and have a great time doing it the whole time with their friends and family right so yeah. that's where we start with our philosophy is displaying tons of opportunity around our country uh, to get off-road see amazing things and go adventure um, we supply a whole bunch of extra benefits along with that. Obviously, just seeing the trails is not quite enough. You wanna be able to see those things while you're completely offline. You don't have cell phone service. You still wanna have a reliable map um, that you can use. You wanna be able to track your adventures. You also wanna be able to see the public and private land information all around you, wherever you're going. You can be clear on, hey, did I cross across private property? Is it legal to camp here? What's the information about this land and what are these trails named? What's the right way to go about this? How do we preserve this for other people? And am I legal to ride my own vehicle on this? Yeah. So we try to attempt to answer all of those questions and then help you along your adventure to and from and everything in between. So, uh, well, we cheated a little bit. We're right already in Moab, so we're in Utah, but the easiest way to do this is, is two ways. One, you can use our search bar here at the top and just type in Moab, Utah. You can see that we've already searched for that in your recent searches. So. It's gonna take us right there. It'll also give you tons of results around uh, where you're interested in. So you've got trails, parks, rec points, uh, rest stops and restrooms, ethanol free fuel stations. All of this comes up in the search. And then even more uniquely, you can even search for private landowners um, in the same place. So if you really wanted to look for um, the, an owner of a property or even just see it on the map, you've got access, access to it right there. The other thing you can do is, of course, you can just hop through and zoom out and zoom in and explore the map as you please. So um, as we zoom out to a larger area, you're gonna see all the trails and roads around the country that we're in. Um, and so, super quick we can just dive through it green trails are usually trails provided by um, the government's data so nvum forest service roads blm data is all in there and then anytime you see these blue pins with the blue highlights on the trails that means that we have guidebook level content along that trail we actually have a, a crew of 1400 trail guides in the united united states right now that actually go and run trails take photographs of them write descriptions of what you might expect along that trail assign difficulty ratings and provide some history around um, some of those trails too it's just an easy way to kind of navigate uh, yourself around the app awesome I bet those are coming in. And then the, is there also a crowdsourcing element to this or is it all just through your trail guides? It is all through our trail guides right now. Um, and we actually see a lot of success, especially in the West with people that are just very passionate about this. Yeah. These are not people that go out and do this for a paycheck or salary. They are just really, truly passionate. They care about getting other people outdoors and they want to provide some of that insight to others. Um, and it's an exciting job for them too. And they probably go through some degree of getting up to speed from you guys about what works, what r people really want to see, instead of just like a bunch of misfit information coming into the app, you're, it's at least concise and... That's totally right. Yeah, okay. we, we get trail guides from every walk of life and across all different types of experience levels. Some people are brand new and they kind of want to know, well, how do I help you know, provide some of this information for other people? And so we do guide them through and we train them on, here's what people are searching for. Take a picture of your vehicle along the trail next to an obstacle so you can understand the, the context and the size of that obstacle with the vehicle um, right there in view. But then of course, we've got some very experienced folks too. I mean, people that have been off-roading for their entire lives. Um, and it's really interesting. We've got a lot of our customers have been off-roading for a long time too. Um, very experienced people that are in our field and 
while they might know everything around them where they live, they obviously want to take some adventures to places that are unfamiliar to them, see new things. And I think this is where that really comes into help. Okay. Awesome. So I'm headed to Moab from Bozeman. Now what? Well, uh, I think the first thing you'd want to do is understand where you want to go, where you might want to camp along the way, the trails or the route that you might want to take, um, and we can make all that happen from one single place. And actually, the, the easiest thing to do, and where most people start, is actually just dropping a waypoint. Yeah. Um, it's something that you want to be able to remember and show on your map. So let's just uh, get down in here. Let's and... make it the grocery store in Moab, <laughs> you know, which is about right in the dead you center of what? town. You know what? Can we actually make it milts? Milts. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. So as we're taking an adventure to Moab, the first place we want to start is where do we get fuel? Where do we get a little bit of beer? And where do you want to camp, right? So yeah. I think we can make that really easy. Yeah. Um, and the first thing I would do, instead of trying to you know, search around the map and try to identify it yourself, we can just use that search bar up top again. Okay. And we're going to go to uh, a brewery. You know, that's the most um, important thing, obviously. Yeah, Moab Brewery. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> All right. So near Moab, that looks like the right place. It's going to drop us there. And provides us some information about what that site is, but at the same time, we can also just pin it ourselves. So we can come down here and add a waypoint. Okay. And we can leave it named like that. We can modify the colors, make notes, uh, add photos, and even add it to a folder in case you have a lot of breweries in Moab you want to add to your brewery folder. Yeah. That's totally possible. Would this also right be there. the start where like my Moab trip, you know, 2022 or something like That's that. That's right. And then you could start flushing it out. Yeah, and we could okay. even just put it in the title. Okay. And we could um, even put a note in here and it says, you know, meet here at noon. Yeah. And we could actually share that with um, our friends or our family that's on the trip with us. And as we change that waypoint for them, so if we update the title, we update the time you want to meet, all the recipients of that waypoint see those updates. Okay. So they even see the color changes, the icon changes, and all the rest of it. Awesome. Yeah, it's really convenient. Okay. So from here, I want to do White Rim Trail. Yeah, finds it as a featured trail. So again, that featured trail is a blue trail, meaning we've got all kinds of guidebook level content on it. We'll query where this trail is. It'll take us to it, and then it'll load some of the information about it. So you're going to see a total estimated time, the types of rides that you could take on this, um, an overview that our trail guides have written, the photos they've taken, and then difficulty ratings and instructions for how to get there. Um, and as we're looking at White Rim Trail. It's incredibly popular. You can also see it's in Canyonlands National Park by our color coding. So all this purple here um, indicates a national park. Okay. And you get waypoints and rec points along the way. So as we find campsites or trailheads along your route, you're gonna see these small rec point icons here. Okay. Um, so there's a campsite there. You can click on that and learn exactly what some of the limitations might be there. You can also reserve via the website um, and it'll That's take nice. you directly out to the website to reserve it if there is a reservation required. Yep, and all of those do require reservations right. for the most part, so. Right. So when you dropped in White Rim, mm -hmm. it put the pin is that dead center of the trail? Like it's the, dead center, the center of the trail, okay. that's right. Um, and you know, trails like this, um, White Rim is not one way, correct? It's a, it's, you yeah, can go, it can go either way. way. And that's what we find with most of them. We are working on a way to actually indicate one way trails though. So mm. we've seen lots of accidents in the last few years of people going the wrong way up wrong, uh, the wrong way up a one way trail. Sure. Um, and trying to alleviate some of that, <laughs> that could happen as well. I'm yeah. um, just informing people of those things. Yeah. Those aren't very common, but right. I could see why that would be important. Cool. Right. Right on. Well, what other features do we need to know about? Like obviously offline. So a lot of these areas totally. there, I've, I've traveled all of these places and there's no cell service in here right now. Um, so offline mapping is important. That's right. And a lot of people ask us all the time, like, oh, well, does it, does my phone work or my iPad work, you know, without cell service? You do have a GPS inside your phone, That's inside right. your iPads, especially the ones, I don't know if it's the, so much the case anymore, but all, do all of them have them or is it only the ones with cell capability still? The iPads with cell capability are the ones that still come with a GPS 
uh, device in it. An actual chip, That's GPS right. chip. That's yeah. right. And so if you want to see your location updating along your route as you're moving, you're going to want an iPad with a cellular uh, device capability. Okay. Just like your phone has. Every, every iPhone, every Android phone that you're going to pick up, as long as you've got cell phone signal, or sorry, as long as you have cell phone service or a GPS signal, you'll be able to work just fine, completely yeah. offline because of what we do with offline maps. Right. We basically allow you to download portions of the United States um, completely with all of our satellite imagery, our topo lines and details, all the details you see on the map with, with the exception of photos on trails. They are all available offline when you download an area and yeah. it's super easy too. So as you can see, I just hopped into the offline maps tab yeah. over here on the left. We're gonna hit new offline map. It's basically gonna give us a box for the area we can download. If we wanna change that, we can go all the way to a 150 mile download. It's a lower resolution, but it gets you a ton of area. Yeah. And if you really wanna zoom in and get targeted on you know, a section of trail, this is the way to do it. Get down into five mile and 10 mile wide sections, and you're gonna get rich detail, uh, including the satellite imagery, being able to zoom in and it gets all the information in one thing. You don't have to identify layers. You don't have to download multiple layers or choose between topo and satellite and the rest of it. It's all there okay. automatically. And so what level of map does that get down to? Does that get down to like one two fiftieth or seven and a half minute map? Like what, how far in, in does it get? I don't know in that specific terminology measure okay um basically if you download a five mile fine resolution map you're going to see the imagery just like you do online you'll be able to zoom okay. all the way down into this experience and see the yeah. detail just as if you were online that's at least seven and a half minute map yep which is the the most uh refined map that you can buy that's from right. like the forest service that's right okay yeah it, it won't leave you lacking anything that you had okay. online at that resolution nice I want to hop back just for a second, just to further clarify that with a phone, you will have cell service, but then as soon as you leave cell service, you're not going to be obviously able to download this uh, or the maps offline. That's right. Uh, you have to do that while you are in service, but then once you leave service, you will select off-road, the off-road maps that you've cached. Right. And then the GPS inside your phone takes over on it being able to, to track it on the map. That's exactly so. right. And we can show you on the iPad too. So if you didn't download anything before you left, yes, you're going to get a blurry map because yeah. we haven't saved anything. But on your iPad or on your phone while you're out adventuring, the moment your device goes off of service and you lose all cell phone connectivity, we will actually automatically hop you into an offline mode okay. where you don't even need, need to do anything. If you're okay. in an area that you've downloaded, it's clear for you. If you're not, it's not. Um, yeah. You don't have to select them or load them or bring them up or anything like that. It's just super nice. convenient. Very good, yeah. Uh, and then so when it comes to the mapping of the trails or, or downloading the maps of the trails, what I like to do is I download the greater area and then I will go into the 10 mile map for the days that I'll be That's like, right. so day one, day two, mm -hmm. day three. And if I have to split it up day one and you know, maybe there's two or three maps depending on how fast I'm traveling. And then if there's any particular area that I'm going to be spending time in that is tricky, perhaps, then I will download a five mile map, but I usually get by with just the 10 mile map radius. I've been adventuring for a year and a half now, basically only using 10 mile maps. I, yeah. I'm very similar to you. I'll actually get a low resolution for a large area, um, yeah. knowing that I might adventure off of my plan at some point. And I at least want something low resolution yeah. there that can you know, get me out of trouble if need be. But the 10 mile maps are super clear. Uh, rarely do I need to zoom into this level to actually get what I need out of those. Yeah. Um, so 10 mile maps along my course are, are really good options. Because what happens is you actually get into these areas and now you're using your eyes. You're, you're looking out past your windshield and you're right. seeing exactly what you need to see. Um, and then one more point on the safety aspect of all this, definitely get your 150 map, 150 mile right. range map because so many times traveling through Utah or somewhere, you'll be doing a trail and last week or three days ago, there was a road washout that happened from a big thunderstorm. And now you got to find a totally different way out because it's unpassable at this point. So you do need, always make sure you have that greater download to get you out of trouble. That's right. And it doesn't take much effort at all. No. 
We just downloaded a little 10 mile over here, but we can quickly just three taps and we're back into a low resolution map. I can save it super quickly. Because we're downloading this on desktop, it doesn't actually download the physical file to the desktop. Okay. It just wouldn't be so useful for you here, right? right. Like your, your desktop won't work offline. Um, but so when you come in here and, and actually hit save, you'll actually be able to see these maps just like this show up on your mobile device that you can then download uh, to okay. your mobile device. You can also download it, you Which can initiate. Makes it, yeah, yeah, makes it very easy to just go over here and everything you did quickly here, you just start tapping and, right. and saying download. That's right. Okay, nice. Easy. We can actually yeah, see our maps already here. You yeah. get a little download button next to them. All you have to do is tap that and it cues them up after you wanna you know, tap few, a few of them if you've identified several um, and then starts downloading automatically. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, cool. One of the tips in offline maps is to make sure your screen stays on, especially if you're downloading on a mobile device. These iPads and iPhones will end up going to sleep and they block all of their download connections when, mm -hmm. that, when that happens. So we have a setting in here where if you just leave the app here, your screen won't go to sleep while your downloads are happening so that you don't lose those downloads and they continue to work. Okay, awesome. So now we've got the, the routes planned and I've got a couple other buddies that are going with me and they have Onyx maps. Yeah. Uh, how do I share that with them? Because we can all get linked up, right? That's right, and they can okay. see exactly who it's coming from. But when you share from a desktop, you're actually just gonna get this link. You can copy this link and send it to anybody you want. And you actually just saw that little notification there that said, this is view only. What this means is when you share a waypoint or a route or a line with somebody, they see all of your updates, almost like Google Drive. If you make an okay. update to a document, they're gonna see that update. Um, now, that means that the recipient of it does not have control over that markup, so they can't change what you set. And if you delete that thing, it also deletes from their map. So okay. if you wanna take back that secret spot, you, host you can it. totally do that. You, you, the, you are the host. That's right. Uh, okay, that's, right. that's nice. I wanna save my secret spots. Yeah. And then on, on mobile, if you want to share from mobile, um, we can actually just grab a quick uh, waypoint here. We'll actually just drop one along this trail. Uh, as a quick tip to drop a waypoint, all you have to do is just hold down on the map where you want to drop it. So after you've created your waypoint, if you want to be able to share that with folks, you just tap on that waypoint and you've got the same share option here. Okay. And same, same notice here, it's gonna be view only, but you can send it via text, airdrop, however you wanna share that via your iPad or iPhone or Android device. Okay, awesome. Is there a measuring tool in this? There is, we do have a line tool that is actually really excellent for measuring. There's actually two kind of aspects to this. One is um, you can go to tools and you'll see all the tools you have access to your location, uh, drop, dropping points for your location, adding photo waypoints, but this line distance tool here is the easiest way to start this. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna have a little crosshair show up on your map. So if I wanna know my distance from here, I just line that crosshair and I drop a point. And if I wanna know, you know, as the crow flies, we can go straight line or we can drop detailed points along the trail and it's kind of building out a tool for us. And as we're adding our points, you're getting updates on distance, your elevation gain and loss, um, and the rest of that information. And then you can also, you're not bound to roads and trails with this, so you can completely just cut across whatever you want and get a straight line measurement to whatever you want. That's very useful in the field. A lot of times you say, how far away is that? You know, how, how far is that point? Uh, so that's, that's great, right. that's great to have. We can even save that share it with other uh, folks friendly. You can even create a route out of this if you wanted to. So if you're in a, a place that doesn't even have documented trails, you can go and lay out a manual route and share that with folks um, in the same way that you were building a route earlier. Sweet. Nice. And I see a bunch of other stuff on here too. So we have like um, the My Garage. This is where we would, this is on the, the side of the, on the, the Let's, let's build a vehicle. That's right, yeah. yeah so this is a brand new feature in our web experience where we're actually letting you add the vehicles that you have in your garage. Um, and it's super simple. So if you've got a, a road legal vehicle, anything that's street legal, you basically select an OEM make and model. If you've got a power sports vehicle, side by side, whatever it might be, that can go down to a custom build. But okay. let's just take it through here. Let's so, do a Toyota Tacoma. Totally. 2020. So we're gonna select our Toyota. Then we're gonna go select our Tacoma, and we'll select our year. 
what we allow you to do is actually select the type of trails that you ride and the surface types that you ride. Okay. Um, because one of the things that you'll be able to do with this is actually quickly filter your map for your vehicle. Okay. Um, and we'll get to that in one moment. So high clearance 4x4 and full width uh, trails are what we're going to take Raven on. Yep. And we might hit some dirt, some gravel, some forest roads, and even some rocks. We'll leave out the sand and snow for now. Um, and if you want to, you can upload photos of your vehicle uh, and provide details. We actually noticed a lot of people adding, you know, I've got a 12,000 pound winch, a three inch lift, 35 inch tires, and all the rest of this. This is um, how much, much the truck weighs. That's right. How that's length, right. width, all that stuff, that's height right. that you want to know. Yeah, and we're working on a, uh, an add-on for this where we're actually creating a log book as well. So you can take down my last oil change, um, any kind of maintenance items you might have, Anything you might want to remember about that vehicle, you'll get a logbook added uh, to this in the coming that weeks. That would be awesome. And if we could also put in there like things to fix, yep. you know, notes totally. from this trail, like oh, we noticed our heater wasn't working or whatever, yep. then you can log that. Totally. That would be awesome. All okay. Right. And you can save that and we won't add photos to, uh, right now, but basically the truck has been added and you can now select this little filter that's going to take off any trails that that truck is not legally allowed to ride. Yeah. Um, so Which now your map is cleans completely focused on yep, yeah, the ride. That's really nice. That allows you to just see what, see what matters. Right. And you can add multiple vehicles in there. And after you've done that, you'll actually just get a whole list of your vehicles you've added. And these little toggles will allow you to filter for each. So when I have my side-by-side -side in there and I want to go side-by-side, -side, I, I, I filter for that. And that way I'm not distracted by all the rest of the trails out there. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. What one else? What one else? One of the other need to know? cool things about Onyx is with our elite package, you get nationwide private lands. And um, what that actually means is that if if a private owner <laughs> owns a piece of land, you can actually see that information. You can see who owns it, the tax address, sometimes some contact information, and that's updated for the entire U.S. So you can literally be driving through your neighborhood and see who owns the houses there. Or as you're on a trail and it's going from public to private and back in between, you get really clear indicators of where you should be and where you might not need to be. So kind of similar to where we have all these colors coded on your map, the blue is national parks, sorry, the purple is national parks, this yellow is BLM land, the green you're seeing over here is forest service. As we get closer and kind of zoom in here, we'll go to Moab, all these little orange outlines and these names showing up are all private property. Um, and it's really easy to get information about these by just tapping on that block. And you can exactly see, all right, here's who owns that if I need to get in touch with them. This is also helpful on the hunt side. So shoot an animal, ends up on another property, need to get in touch, in touch with that person because I want permission to go retrieve my animal. It's perfect, but it's also really beautiful off for off-road. I mean, it's kept me out of a lot of situations that um, I was questioning whether I should camp there or get access there, and I just knew right away. It was super easy. Is coming from a family of ranch owners, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, we would appreciate people just knowing if they can or can't be there. That's right. You know? So this puts the responsibility on us as overlanders uh, to make sure that we're in the right spot. That's right. Um, and we, we all should take the responsibility to know where we are. Yes. If you don't know where you are, that's on you. That's a problem. <laughs> it's a, and it's a problem. <laughs> so be, be educated, have the right tools, uh, and uh, like on X or whatever, but make sure that you're educated on where you are. Exactly right. What next? Also get into, um, so let's actually just hop into Discover. Okay. So say you want to go on an adventure, but you actually don't really know where to go. You yeah. might not know a lot of trails. You might not know what's near you or anything about them to be, to be com completely yeah. honest. So you hop into Moab and you're like, well, I hear there's great trails here. Where do I go? We've got this great discover experience on mobile, iPad, and on web where you open this up and it's actually going to show you nearby trails that you may be interested in. And you're going to see, first of all, we put our trail guide content up top and then we start filling in with some of the information down here. So if you really wanted to get into it, you can get a quick glance. Moab Rim, all right, that's an eight out of a 10. That might be pushing it for my adventure today, but I might be able to hop down to Hell's Revenge or for a six or find any other options that may be a little bit more tame for my taste. So this is a service around the entire country based on where you're looking, not exactly where you're located. So when you're searching, um, you're actually gonna get results for the areas that you're, you're curious about, not just what's close to you at yeah. your current location. 
Nice. The other thing you're seeing in here is that My Garage thing popping up again. This shows you uh, what you're legal to ride down this trail, and then it shows you exactly your vehicles that you've added to your garage um, that are legal to go there as well. Okay. Handy. Yeah. Um, the other thing is directly from the, these screens right here. So if you click on a trail and you just want to know more about it, we've got these tabs up here that can also guide you to other nearby trails and then provide you an actual excellent weather experience. So we provide you the current conditions, um, rainfall and a forecast along this time. Um, and we rely on thousands of weather stations around the US so that you can actually get a better idea of, all right, is it gonna be raining on me when I'm there? How windy is it gonna be in my tent? You know, do I need to sleep in the cab tonight instead of a 75, yeah. 75 mile an hour Find wind gust? place with shelter. That's it's right. It's gonna be super windy. So yeah. that's, it's really a, a treat okay. for that. And then we were using this the other night for the, the, the eclipse that was happening for a couple hours and it was super nice to know the moon phases and the rest of the information around that's here awesome. too. Does, it, does the weather also provide any warnings that may come Not up? Not at the moment. Um, that's actually an interesting thing we should talk about though, is we do have um, information about wildfires that may be burning in your area. And this is actually a perfect example of this. So anytime there is a wildfire that gets reported, it shows up within the day in our app so you can get a better idea of exactly how your route might get affected. That's and as awesome. we zoom into these, this is actually probably a pretty small fire right here, but you'll actually start to see exactly how large it is. Yeah, and this is just a single incident. We can probably find a, you'll actually get a red box around here that shows you okay. the exact uh, size the fire is. We'll give you information on how contained that fire is um, and all the other updates that might be there. We might be able to find one. There we go. Yeah, there you go. So larger fire in Albuquerque, you can uh, click on this. You can see it's currently 95% contained. This is how many acres it's burning. Um, and that way, if you've got a route going right through this area, you know immediately um, these are also available offline. Now, you do need to go back online at some point if you want to get anything updated in the future. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. obviously have to be able to get that to you. Yeah, awesome. For the new user that's about to come in, what are some last minute tips and tricks for them to, to utilize? Well, what I would do is I would utilize waypoints as much as possible. They are incredibly useful for remembering locations, marking turn locations. So if you've got just a plan and you haven't built a route on it and you say, I need to remember to turn there, yeah. you can quickly just lay a waypoint down, turn right here, and the moment you see it on your map or in Dash, you can get access and just see, okay, there's my turn. In Dash is available via CarPlay and Android Auto where you can see all of your markups and all of these trails along with all the public and private information directly in your Dash. So as you're driving through, your dashboard will be displaying private land information and all the information that we've talked about here. And it will also show you your routes that you can follow. And then finally, if you really wanna get a better idea of the area that you're in or the area that you plan to visit, um, especially in different times of the year, if I'm searching for uh, a place to camp when it's pretty snowy outside. I wanna make sure I'm not you know, on the edge of a cliff trying to get to my camp spot that night. And our 3D features really help with this. So you can actually just rotate into 3D and get a really easy view of the landscape and exactly how it looks and how you might need to treat it. Or if that's the right trail for you, you get a pretty quick idea of if you're on a cliff side, snowy ledge, or if you're gonna be in a you know, pretty level pasture as well. Yeah. That can help you make some educated decisions too. Using common sense, you're like, it's super snowy, it's June right now. I probably can't get up there right now That's anyway. Right. That's right. Because look at that terrain, look at the elevation. Uh, so maybe I better pick a different route that's, that's right. a little lower, lower elevation. Totally. So, which would be a great feature, keep within certain elevation. I, Rory and I have been talking about this. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, a way to extend your season um, yeah. at the end of the year as, as you're getting some snow and you're not quite sure where to go, like being able to identify some of the more level spots, less risky trails that you know might be a little bit more palatable. Yeah. Seasonal road closures, all those things. Seasonal that's, road that's closures, That's big yeah. in Montana. Like, you know, that's a right. lot of our roads just opened up or some that's of right. them aren't even open yet and it's June right now as we film this. Totally, and we can probably find an example of this. Yeah, we'll just go up north a little bit and you'll, also, you'll start seeing all these little orange lines here. Okay. So those are trails, but we've color coded them orange because they're seasonally closed. Okay. And to get more information on it, you just click on that trail and you can see the open, open dates. dates. So Six, we just haven't made it to the 21st yep. yet. We got 20 days yet to go. That's right. Before that's open. All right, it's good stuff. Yeah. The mapping and the world of mapping has come so far. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing since we started and what we have now accessible. It's pretty
pretty cool. So yeah, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There's a lot to this. You just, at the end of the day, you do have to subscribe, get in here and just start playing with it. But hopefully this video gave you the, some really good starting points to get started in Onyx Maps. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, since you've made it all the way to the end of this video, you also get a discount. Uh, it's in the description below. And I hope that helps you get started into the awesome world of mapping. And we'll see you out on the trail.